I've been putting this topic aside for a while now, uh, and I kind of have a hard time coming back to it, but I really wanted to get a bit deeper into the uh, variational quantum eigen solver. Um, because that's where I ended up last time when I started when I started diving into the chemistry and uh, the, the chemistry notebooks in uh, of the of the IBM quantum experience, and it, it seems like this is where it was all going to. Um, and I just I, I want to read that through a little bit and see if if there's anything interesting um, to follow up on this, dig a little bit deeper. Although I, I already mentioned that I I seem to see a pattern where you know, quantum quantum circuits being used as parameterized quantum circuits being used as learning models. Um, you know, th this being a pattern for most of for, for a lot of the stuff that is behind uh, quantum machine learning and stuff like that. Um, now I, I'm trying to find I'm trying to dig my way towards quantum simulation a little bit and see how can you use quantum to simulate stuff. You know, what does this really mean? Because it's a, a lot of fuzzy stuff uh, and buzzwordy type of uh, conversations online about how is this going to re re revolutionize chemistry and finding new materials and stuff like that. So I just let's let's just jump into it. Um, stop talking. The original quantum eigen solver. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Uh, Hyperconic classical. Here is the topic of this post. Is to find eigenvalues of a matrix H. Okay, which is often too large to perform a similar operation in a classical computer. So this is just about finding eigenvalues of a matrix H, which then in turn means that if you've got probably any any chemistry problems that can be reduced into finding eigenvalues, then that's the way to go. The problem of finding eigenvalues appears in many areas, such as optimization, quantum simulations, or quantum chemistry. Okay, so it's part of okay both simulations and chemistry. Um, in this possible we'll learn VQE implementation in Python with the usage of quantum, of quantum computer simulator. Firstly, we'll get a grasp on theory. Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. Basics right here. Quantum computing with high level programming languages. Okay. Um, theory. Assume that we want to know the lowest eigenvalue lambda of a Hermitian matrix H. The VQE, uh, v, VQE algorithm uses a quantum subroutine inside a classical minimization task. Okay. Um, the quantum subroutine consists of two parts. Prepare quantum state, mm -hmm. measure the expectation value of H in the state, mm, which is denoted by quantum value of H. Okay, H behaving as an operation here. Or being implemented as an operation. So the, the the Hermitian matrix, Hermitian matrix, however that's pronounced, which is supposed to describe how the energy evolves, I think, if I remember well. Uh, okay. According to the variational theorem, theorem. What is the variational theorem? Let me just I'm just opening up another tab first. Quantum mechanics. Let's just see what's what's in here. The variational, th variational method is one way of finding approximations to the lowest energy eigenstate or ground state in some extent. This allows calculating approximate wave functions such as molecular, molecular orbitals. The base of this method is, is the variational principle. The variational principle is a scientific principle used with the calculus of variations, which develops general methods for finding functions which extremize the value of quantities. What is the shape of the Methods of choosing a trial wave function depending on one or more parameters, finding its values of these parameters for which the expectation value of the energy is the lowest possible. The wave function obtained by fixing the parameters to such values is then an approximation to the ground state wave function and the expectation value. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, that's the idea of. You pick up some parameters and then you try to minimize the value. And then once you find the minimal value, then you assume those parameters is yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go back. The expectation value is always greater or equal to the lowest eigenvalue. Our problem boils down to finding such an optimal choice of real value parameters that the expectation value is minimized and the approximate okay 
classical so this is where classical optimization enters the game mm. thanks to the quantum subroutine we get an expectation value dependent on the the parameters and then you minimize it with gradient optimization okay that's just one but choose whatever you whatever fits the best it turns out that we can expect and the logic to cover an arbitrary number of k first eigenvalues. Interesting readers can look into that. Uh, the following example will give you a general idea of VQE. We will search for the lowest eigenvalue of the following matrix. This is one of the Pauli matrices. Um, the lowest eigenvalue of this matrix is minus one. Uh, it is full code host in GitHub. So much is required. Now create a connection with the get this simulator. And that's as previously mentioned, the matrix of interest is one part is one of Pauli's matrices. The package Packwell has already implemented as a quantum gate, thus let's define it. Okay. The expectation value of H is measured in the state boom. And a minimum is found by varying parameters. How do we define such state? Yeah. Uh, it turns out that selection of the state is arbitrary, so random. The routine that takes parameters as an input and prepares a quantum state is named an, the ansatz function. Okay. In PyQuil library, an ansatz could be any program that accepts some input parameters and outputs a valid quantum state. As H is same as we to simplify we consider answers with only one parameter as an example we use ry gate acting on a qubit in state zero okay so that's your that's your ansatz that's your okay in python we define the above ansatz function da -da -da. Okay, expectation. Let's define a function returning an expectation value for this. The measurement of qubits in, in PyQuil is made either in, in state 0 or 1, so this is not straightforward to calculate the expectation values. However, there is a simple trick. First, firstly, let's remind ourselves the measurement projectors represent, present in this post. The relative frequency, I'm just reading, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to try to make sense of it a bit at the end. Um, the relative frequency of measuring qubit in zero state can be expressed as this, this, this we can express the expectation value as this minus this. Uh, Let's transform the above equations into Python function. Minimization. So how does the VQE work? Let's see how the expectation value changes with respect to the parameter value. We assume that the parameter value is in the range 0 to 2 pi and draw a graph with the following code snippet. Um, expectation value so what is the expectation okay yeah so we can conclude the minimum is around minus one which is close to the lowest eigenvalue of h to get a, a better approximation of visual inspection let's use classical minimization algorithm we set the additional parameters okay that's that that's just doing the that's that's doing here the classical minimization. There's an example in growth. Uh, full code. I'm still in GitHub, okay. More complex case. Mm. Expectation value can be measured efficiently using similar methods presented in the previous. The lowest eigenvalue of the matrix is minus 1.4. 
As we deal with a higher dimensional matrix, let's define a more sophisticated ansatz. Okay. We're not going to use C naught gate to we're going to use C naught gate to introduce entanglement and R Y gates on all qubits. Additionally, this is repeated three times where D is the depth of the quantum circuit. Ah, okay, so this this whole thing is repeated three times. So, so far I've got this, just want to revisit the, the expectation value thing and then enhance this preparation. It just feels weird. <laughs> oh. Okay. Conclusions. We have presented the VQ algorithm with Python implementation. I hope that working with Code and numbers will give you a better understanding of the quantum algorithm. This is the quantum gate noise, however, not to a measurement noise. More work against this. Viki UE has been used in another popular quantum algorithm, namely QAOA. Yeah. I, I kind of. I, 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 at some point, I, I, it, the whole thing loses meaning in terms of what's an algorithm and what, what's the algorithm, what's not the algorithm. I thought QAOA was the algorithm, but it's it's let me what was this thing with the expectation? expectation value of h is measured in the state and a minimum and a minimum is found by varying parameters uh, expectation let's define a function returning an expectation value the measurement of qubits in pike is made either in state 0 or in state 1 ah so that is used as a base so it's not straightforward to calculate expectation values. However, there is a simple trick. Firstly, let's remind ourselves ourselves the measurement projectors presented in this post. The relative frequency of measurement can be in zero in zero state can be expressed like this. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand that. Frequency is zero minus frequency is one. The mm -hmm. an expectation value. So I don't understand the con. I'm a bit lost. Uh, the expectation value is always greater or equal to the lowest eigenvalue. So what is this expectation value? I'm, I'm going to dig into this a little bit now, but the, the but this seems simply so. There's two big question marks for me here, and one is the the choice of an ansatz um, seems fairly random or fairly like, yeah, let's go with it. Um, 
the overall concept intuitively simple to understand. Mm. But at the end of the day here, it's like, how do you know what's, what's a good ansatz, right? Because here we have a you have a more complex uh, here you have a, a, a complex more complex example uh, and basically the the, 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 re, the the thought process is because we have a higher dimensional matrix we define a more sophisticated ansatz. So it's not clear to me why does entanglement make a difference here. I guess the idea is kind of, if I remember well from my QAO exploration, is that you want to have an you want to have an ansatz that allows you to explore a, a big range of solution space, kind of. So you want an ansatz that allows you to uh, move around your Hilbert space, kind of thing, I guess, uh, and explore as much as possible. That's why you want to add things like entanglement, because without that, you're you're kind of have a limited space, uh, a more limited space, mm. and you've got three rotations. Okay. Okay. So about the expectation, that was not that clear. So if I just Google VQE and that's VQE best and that's Oh look! Is there an intuition? Is there an intuition to build an uh, build on ansatz uh, in VQE algorithm, or is it more a trial and error approach? Uh, but the ansatz part is very tricky. I don't really understand if they are built on some intuition according to hardware or somewhere else, or just trial and error approach. It can be used for many things. The most popular application case for quantum chemistry problems is in this paper, where they are trying to find the ground state wave function of a molecular Hamiltonian. The VQE is trying to find the eigenvector with the smallest eigenvalue energy. Here you can see what they suggest, that they suggest a unitary coupled cluster ansatz. The reason they chose UCC is because it's, it is well known that coupled cluster already gives a very good approximation of the ground state wave function. In fact, it is the, the basis of what chemists call the gold standard of quantum chemistry. Okay, so there's something else to explore here. Probably in the next video, the UCC, the unitary coupled cluster. That's going to be topic for the next video. Uh, let me just... Remember VQE is, is heuristic. The better the answers that you start with, the more likely your VQE will perform well. As you correctly said in your question, you can use intuition or trial and error, or just use any knowledge you have of the problem to come up with something that you believe will work well. As in the case of using a coupled cluster ansatz for the problem, where coupled cluster is already considered the gold standard for people solving the problem on classical computers, there's no general recipe for how to come up with the ansatz. Okay. It's called heuristic. Yeah. Okay, that answers my question. Um, give me a second. I'm just, I'm just uh, opening up my Trello on the side because I don't want to forget. Uh, I don't want to forget to explore to explore that thing, the UCC, um, in the next video. But it's still the. I wanted to clear what what do they mean by so? What is this expectation? Is it the because it seems like the the answer is sort of your model, right? And and then w what you want to do is what you, you want to measure.
Maybe I should go through a, a more concrete example on a paper. The expression value of h is measured. What is the expectation value of h? A, a, a previous dimension matrix of interest value. Um, state is a no and its function. Uh, So this is this is what I don't fully understand the expectation value. Uh, so VQE value me measurement. Uh, Expectation value involves measurement of the Hamiltonian expectation value. What is the Hamiltonian expectation value? So would would this be? Maybe I'm just maybe just have like a blurred mind, but like what is the? Kinetic energies plus potential energies on the part of the system. Uh, consider particle energy potential. Uh, boah. That's too technical for me. What is the. Let's see what the growth says, what the growth stock says. Uh, okay. Measure the expectation value. The variational principle ensures that this expectation value is always greater than the smallest. Uh, Then quill is measurable end up in class one doing this direct followed by a small amount of prosperous signal may compute a real expectation value for the classical optimizer to use. So but what is this expectation value? That's what I'm that's what I'm missing sort of the the measuring the Hamiltonian in the VQE. I'm trying to implement VQE in PyQuill and I'm Dumb founded by how to measure the expectation value of a general Hamiltonian. Yeah, determine this on a quantum computer. As far as I understand, on a real quantum computer, not any quantum virtual machine, I can only measure in the computational basis, which is the basis of the Hamiltonian X. But not for any Hamiltonian whose eigenvectors are not the computational basis. But how do I measure with any Hamiltonian that is not diagonal? In the conditional basis, sure I can measure, example, some of the qubits in the in the x basis instead of the z basis by applying a Hadamard gate to them. Yeah, that's okay. That's I think that's where I was, my intuition was going. Is is it that the expectation value of Hamiltonian is that this is you want to use that as the base mm, as the measurement base? But because this is yeah, on the x basis by applying Hadamard gate to them, but this surely doesn't help me if I want to measure something non local, if a ground state of my Hamilton is an entangled state. Mm. Can I write any Hamiltonian as a poly decomposition? Uh, that was also what was written in the blog post, I think. You can decompose any Hamiltonian for VQE purposes in any finite dimensional Hamiltonian. As such, the expected value can be estimated by measuring the expected values of such combinations of poly matrices. There may be trouble if the quantity of these terms grows exponentially. No, the computational basis is not necessarily the basis that diagonalizes the Hamiltonian. It also looks like you're confusing the x basis with the basis of a Hamiltonian. Advice you should write. No, with x. Mm. I kind of 
feel I kind of feel where this is going but I'm not entirely sure I can explain it mm. Because intuitively, this is like you you prepare that ansatz state, then you apply your Hamiltonian. And then you do the bra. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not entirely sure I grasp this. So this is something I want to dive a little bit deeper in, into. So what's the, intuitively what's the meaning of this? What's intuitively the meaning of this? And then the UCC that's going to be the next step. But it seems like it seems intuitively this is really you know it's it's kind of like you're, you're you you need to come up with a once you have like the ansatz that is kind of an, a model of what you're trying to do. You basically measure that expectation value and try to minimize that, and that's going to take you to the solution. So one of those situations where I feel, I feel, I, I feel like I, I, I kind of. Uh, almost understand this but I'm like mm, I can't really fully explain it so I don't really I don't really feel comfortable with it but I guess it's part of the learning process <laughs> cool let's keep pushing this